So that was uh, Prime Minister Tony Abbott there, joined now by Arash Aramesh, a national security analyst at Stanford University in California. Thanks for joining us, Arash. Um, still no direct acceptance of responsibility from anyone in this matter. No, not yet. This is not something that any group or organization in, involved in this fight, the Ukrainian separatists or the Russian government, would like to take responsibility for. This is something they know uh, that's nothing to be proud of. And they know very well this is going to have a lot of political costs for either the uh, Russian separatists or you know, Russian-speaking separatists in Ukraine or the Russian government, or both. So it's not something they would like to come out and publicize. If you, uh, you know, as you know, President Putin today said that any organization, any body, any committee investigating this crash has to be composed of, uh, of, of, a, of a diverse group of objective and non-biased uh, investigators. What he means, he means that he already wants to start asking questions about uh, Boeing and uh, Malaysian and American and European and U Ukrainian investigators. He already wants to question their integrity. This is not something they want to take responsibility for. E if they eventually do, uh, that is something that's going to have great cost. But we know what happened. This is not. This is the year 2014. There is great uh, satellite imagery. There is great satellite pinpoint targeted imagery. Uh, especially in the military sector, that we know exactly what happened, at what time, from exactly where these missiles were fired. And if this information is not being released point by point, it's only to allow the other side to do some sort of political damage control, so the fallout would be a lot less for the international community. Now, as far as the black box, we saw images there of one of the emergency um, personnel on the site carrying off um, the black box. It was actually orange. They say they've got it. As when I say they, I mean the rebels. How likely do you think it is that they're going to cooperate and they're going to hand it over to international investigators? Oh, they will cooperate when Moscow tells them to hand over the uh, uh, black boxes or no more weapons. This is not really an insurgency. This is a Moscow-backed, Moscow-supported and Moscow-funded military operation in Ukraine trying to destabilize the government in Ukraine in Kiev and trying to put pressure on the West and on the Ukrainian government. Now, Mr. Putin is running the risk of losing control over some of these more radical elements. But again, if he wants to order them to hand over these black boxes, he can easily do so. Here's what happened in 1983. If you remember, a Korean airliner went down after a Russian MiG shot not one but two missiles and brought it down. The Russians hit the two black boxes that they found shortly after, until 1994, 1995, when Boris Yeltsin, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, Boris Yeltsin, the Russian president, finally handed them over to the international community for the contents of those black boxes to be uh, studied. So it took about a decade for the Soviets, well, then the later the, the Russians, to hand over those black boxes. Quick point, though, we don't need the black boxes at this point to determine who shot the missiles or where the missiles came from or what really happened. It's absolutely clear from the evidence provided that this was shot down by Buk, Buk, uh, SA-11 missile. Uh, and there is very good evidence that this came from either Russian-backed uh, separatists or from the Russian Federation. Arash, don't you think that times have changed somewhat now? I mean, I can't see how the international community and certainly those countries involved um, in this tragedy accepting a 10-year wait. Has Mr Putin overextending himself, overextended himself in this one? Uh, Mr Putin has really taken advantage of a lack of unity between the Western world. The, Euro the European Union and the United States have imposed some sanctions, have tried to sort of uh, be able to fight back Mr Putin's aggressive behaviour in Ukraine, but they haven't done enough. Uh, there is plenty of European dependence on uh, Russian natural gas and oil. That has to come to, to an end. Or that has to come to... Uh, the Europeans have to realize that, hey, listen, we can no longer be so beholden to Russia in terms of natural gas, gas and oil. For the, at, for the, at the very least, the U.S. can start uh, easing some of these tensions. Secondly, the White House here in the United States has also not been very responsive to the demands of the Europeans. Chancellor Merkel, Prime Minister Cameron, 
they've actually been making certain demands and they've also tried to stand up. But here's as long as London is a Vegas for Russian investors and as long as uh, uh, Berlin depends so heavily and Eastern Europe depends so heavily on Russian, Russian oil, Mr. Putin has a winning card. But again, don't undermine European Union and American resolve and Western uh, unity. We get that. We're going to put a lot of pressure on Putin and he's going to back down. Okay, well, we'll see when and if he does. Arash, thank you.